Hello and welcome to MCP training video number 17 which is on the VOR portion of the VOR LOC switch. We're in the cockpit so let's get set up and get started. I'm going to start up my screen marker utility and get that uh, all set up for us for use and then I'm going to fire up sim checklist, the tutorial, the VOR section and we'll minimize the main form and I think that's it we're all set up and we are ready to go. VOR stands for very high frequency omnidirectional radio range and before I get in and start talking about some of the history of it I wanted to show you a couple of photographs of what a VOR station looks like sometimes we're driving around on the highways, I usually see uh, VOR stations when I drive between Los Angeles and San Diego. But anyway, this is a, a couple of pictures of the different types of VOR stations and what they look like. And uh, as you drive around various parts of the uh, country, you may have seen uh, structures similar to these. And these are um, what VOR ground stations look like. VOR is a short-range radio navigation system for aircraft enabling aircraft to determine their position and stay on course by receiving radio signals transmitted by a network of fixed ground-based navigation stations. VOR uses frequencies in the VHF or very high frequency band from 108.0 to 117.95 megahertz. It was developed in the United States in 1937 and deployed for the first time in 1946, so it's about 68 years old. VOR is the standard air navigation system in the world used by both commercial and general aviation aircraft. By the year 2000, there were 3,000 VOR stations around the world, including 1,033 in the U.S. By 2013, this number was reduced to 967 as VOR stations are being decommissioned with the widespread adoption of GPS. There are three types of VORs. I've got an image on the left hand side of the screen showing the navigation chart symbols for the three types. The first type is what's called a plain VOR. It's a navigation station, a VOR navigation station with no slant range distance measuring equipment built in. The second type is VOR DME, and this obviously has distance measuring equipment built in. So this VOR will also provide distance measuring equipment. The third type that you'll see on your nav charts that are available for use is called a VORTAC. This is a combined VOR facility with a TACAN, which is a military navigation ground-based system, and TACAN stands for Tactical Air Navigation. So the TACAN facilities provide DME information and the civilian side of it, the VOR that we use as civilians, we can make use of the DME provided by the TACAN part. So TACAN is a navigation system used by the military. It provides the user with bearing and slant range distance information to a ground or shipborne station. And the DME portion of the TACAN system is available for civilian use. So those are the three types, and these are the three navigation chart symbols that you'll find, and uh, that will denote the type of VOR station that it is. Now I want to talk about the expanded approach mode views that we have of the VOR on our ND displays. We've got on the left hand side here we've got what's referred to as the expanded approach mode view on the ND and on the right hand side I've got a screenshot of the center what we call the center approach mode and in the cockpit I want to show you how we get those set up so here we are in the cockpit if we zoom in on the EFIS control panel let me pop up a nav display if you select VOR, you'll change the display 
and it goes into the expanded mode. If you press the center button, CTR, if you press on that, you'll toggle it or cycle it to the mode that's referred to as the center approach mode. So you can see the whole compass rose. And if you just keep pressing the CTR switch in the center, you'll just toggle between those two views, the expanded and the center. So that's how you get, get those two views on the ND. Go to uh, VOR, select VOR on the EFIS, and then press the center button for the mode view that you want to have on your ND display. So I want to go back and talk about the ND displays themselves, and I want to start with this one here. Here's a screenshot that I've taken on the ND display, and I've put some labels in here in yellow, and I just want to go over and talk about the labels because these are referring to the VOR portion of our ND display. And so the first thing I want to talk about is the, the coarse needle itself, which is right here. And you can see on the coarse needle, we have the head coarse pointer up here. And we've got a little, it, it's almost like a plus symbol. And that's how we identify the head coarse pointer. And of course, this would be the tail. Now on this side, I've got another uh, screen image that I've put into this view, but without all the labels. So we can see the tail of the VOR coarse selector here. And here's the head. In the center, this magenta bar, this is uh, what Boeing calls the lateral deviation indicator or the LDI. So here's the LDI over here. And the dots represent our LDI scale, lateral deviation indicator scale. How far we're off from our selected course when the LDI indicator is, is not right on the center as it's shown here. I typically refer to this from habit as the CDI, <laughs> the course deviation indicator. So I'm still uh, still trying to use the proper terminology, uh, LDI, lateral deviation indicator. We also have for VOR navigation, we have a to from flag. So here's the white triangle. That's the to from indicator. And we also have a label down here that, that tells us if we're to or from. And then on the lower left and right corners of the ND display, the nav radios, if they're set to VOR frequencies, will show us VOR1 on this side for that nav radio and VOR2 on this side for the first officer with his nav radio. And we'll get a display of the VOR station. In this case, I have PMD, which is Palmdale VOR, which is a station located just north of Los Angeles in the, um, in the high desert. It's just south of Edwards Air Force Base. And if you have DME, you'll get DME information displayed as well. Now, uh, I also put a screenshot of the RMI, the radio magnetic indicator. And there is a relationship. If you have the VOR uh, switches uh, set and pointing to the VOR, the, the dedicated RMI needle or I should say the dedicated RMI indicator, the needles will point to those VOR stations. And the reason I'm showing the RMI is because we also have the same needles shown in green on the ND display when we select VOR. So it's, it's the same thing. Here, the single needle is pointing to the Palmdale VOR, which is behind us, 4.8 DME miles. And here's the head the green arrow, we can see the arrowhead, and this is the tail. And for the number two needle, that's pointing to the VR, VOR station for number two, and that's tuned to another VOR. This is happens to be Lake Hughes, which is up in, this, in the same area. And then on the ND display, we can see the same needles, uh, same needle rather, for the number two pointing to the Lake Hughes VOR. And we can see how it parallels the RMI. Now, for orientation in the cockpit, I want to uh, show you where the, the RMI, the de dedicated RMI indicator is. It's located right down here. So that's it right there. And I had a second 
screenshot. This is the same information. I'm just showing a different a different setup. Here's the tail of the uh, course selector on the ND. Here's the head course uh, the head course pointer. Here's the uh, lateral deviation indicator, the LDI, uh, which I'm always referring to as the CDI from habit. Uh, here's the LDI scale to show uh, how far we're displaced from the selected course. And the uh, LDI indicator will always point towards the course. So in this case, it's shown us that it's off to our, our left if, if we were flying uh, in this direction, which we don't happen to be. But if we were, it would tell us that the course is off to our left and we'd have to fly in that direction somewhere over here in this heading uh, in order to intercept that. And there's the, uh, this uh, screenshot shows what the two label looks like. Here's the one we looked at earlier that shows from, and here's what two looks like. Okay, so I think that completes uh, everything I wanted to show you on the ND symbols. Okay, so we're going to get into the FCOM 2 slash ground school part of this. Um, there's only about three slides, and I'm going to cover... It's almost the same material that was covered in the previous localizer FCOM2, except this is going to apply obviously to the VOR part, but it is going to be fairly similar. So I think for the most part, it'll just serve as kind of a general review of the entire uh, VOR slash uh, loc switch itself. So on the uh, MCP, I've already highlighted the VOR loc switch that uh, I'm going to be talking about. So let's get started. When we push the VOR loc switch, it will command the autopilot flight director system role to capture and track the selected VOR course. It will enunciate VOR loc armed or engaged as roll mode and illuminates the VOR loc switch light. Now remember the VOR loc armed or engaged, that's in the FMA. Let me... Uh, quickly highlight that because I want to mention again as I did in the VOR part that uh, what Boeing calls engaged we know what the arm is we get the VOR low arm that's the white labels uh, smaller font size and the engaged the term that Boeing uses really means capture that's what we're talking about capture so in this particular cockpit view we've got uh, VOR low capture so that's the what I call capture, but Boeing refers to as engaged. So to repeat, pressing the VOR loc switch will enunciate the VOR loc armed or engaged as the roll mode and illuminates the VOR localizer switch light right here. VOR mode. Pushing the VOR loc switch selects VOR mode if a VOR frequency is tuned. On the center console, we probably already know that our nav radios are located here. So this is VHF nav 1, and this is VHF nav 2. So pushing the VOR loc switch selects VOR mode if a VOR frequency is tuned, and we're talking about the nav radios located here. The VOR mode provides roll commands to track the selected VOR course. The selected course can be intercepted while engaged in LNAV, heading select, and control wheel steering roll. The capture point is variable and depends on intercept angle and closure rate. Course capture is indicated when VOR loc enunciation changes from armed to engaged, or what I always still like to call capture, changes from armed to capture. While engaged in VOR mode, the A autopilot and captain's flight director use information from the captain's course selector and number one VHF nav receiver. The B autopilot and first officer's flight director use information from the first officer's course selector and the number two VHF nav receiver. Different courses and or frequencies for the two VHF nav receivers can cause disagreement between the captain and first officer's flight director displays and affect autopilot operation. This concludes training video number 17 on the MCP VOR loc switch.
specifically the VOR portion of this switch. In the next video, number 18, I will brief you on the flight demo, which will be a VOR approach into Las Vegas. I will briefly cover the two new subtopics I went over in some detail in the previous localizer approach briefing videos. The constant angle non-precision approaches using vertical speed and the visual descent point. So this will conclude MCP training video number 17. Please email me if you have any questions or comments. I'll see you in video number 18 in a few minutes. Thank you.